In southern Lebanon, a seemingly harmless fruit plantation can quickly turn deadly. Here, efforts continue to clear cluster munitions left from the 2006 conflict with Israel and mines left from Lebanon's civil war. Of the four million cluster munitions dropped by Israeli jets, an estimated quarter did not explode an impact. Khalil Saka works for the Lebanese army-affiliated Lebanese Mine Action Center. Many people die for, uh, from this uh, bomblet and their mines. And uh, it's so high, the risk, it's so high in our work. But uh, we have to work because we have to, to clear all the area. Though clearance workers have the expertise and equipment, the number of those killed and injured by leftover munitions has recently started to increase. Half a million people are still living and working in areas at risk, with 19 injured so far this year, more than in all of 2014. And it is often children, like Nabir Bazir, who suffer. Nabir, along with his brother and friends, was injured by a cluster bomb this spring. Everyone can come and go, but now my brother and I can't. They've been going to school, but we haven't been able to go. With the onset of the recent conflicts in Syria, funding has dropped as some donors divert aid to help refugees, many of whom are entering Lebanon unaware of the potential risk from cluster munitions and mines. Organizations like the Mine Action Group are placing a greater emphasis on educating people on the dangers of unexploded munitions. Two people uh, can cover a vast amount of communities, gather them, talk to them, explain to them about the dangers. And since Lebanon is a key signatory to the Convention on Cluster Munitions, Bekim warns that if it fails to reach a target of clearing such munitions by 2020, there could be consequences. If the funding drops, we're not going to be able to achieve, uh, to achieve the obligation. And what that means, and that's very sad, because um, what message are we sending to other countries? John Owens, VOA News, South Lebanon.